With Psychonauts 2 right around the corner, we here at Suggestive Gaming figured now would be the perfect time to take a step back and revisit the story of the original Psychonauts released in 2005, as well as the 2017 VR exclusive sequel, Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin. Now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about Psychonauts. Our story begins at the Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp, where Coach Morceau Oleander is briefing his pupils, children with psychic abilities that are training to become members of the elite group of international secret agents known as the Psychonauts. Coach Oleander is joined by Psychonauts Sasha Nine and Mia Vodello, who keep him in check as he begins to scare the children. Suddenly, someone falls from a nearby tree, and as the Psychonauts telepathically grab him, they find that he is somehow able to resist their strong mental abilities. He breaks free and introduces himself as Rasputin, or Raz for short. While the adults are impressed by his mental fortitude, they nonetheless scold him for sneaking into the camp. Raz convinces them to let him stay momentarily, but Mia nonetheless calls his parents to pick him up and informs him that he cannot participate in any psychic training without their consent. Raz befriends a fellow camper named Dogen Bool, while a nearby Oleander cryptically states that he has plans for Raz's powerful brain. The next morning, Raz meets with the rest of his fellow campers, then makes his way to Coach Oleander, ignoring Mia's orders and asks him to partake in his basic braining exercise. Raz then enters the coach's mind through a door-like portal in his head, and inside, Raz learns about the various objects of interest he'll find inside the worlds of others' minds, including figments of their imagination, emotional baggage, and finally, memory vaults, which hold images of the subject's memory. Raz finds Coach Oleander's vault and sees memories filled with various military accomplishments. Raz is also met by fellow camper Bobby Zilch, a bully who pushes him off a ledge where he is rescued by another camper named Lily Zanato. Raz continues on, eventually reaching the end of the training course, but finding a mysterious open door. Through the door, he finds a hallway with a curtain at the end obscuring some kind of blueprint but as he inspects it, he is pulled away by Coach Oleander, who congratulates him on his success and gives him his first Psychonaut Merit Badge, allowing him to access the rest of the camp. After Raz leaves Oleander's brain, he is met by Agent Sasha Nine, who tells Raz how impressed he is with his abilities, asking him to meet back at his lab for further unauthorized training. As Raz makes his way to look for the lab, he begins to find arrowheads, which are used around the camp as currency. Raz later learns that these arrowheads were fashioned by the area's natives hundreds of years ago out of a meteorite that struck the area. The meteorite was composed of a psychoactive mineral called Cytanium, whose influence drove the inhabitants mad. After an asylum called the Thorny Towers Home for the Disturbed was opened and subsequently closed, the government flooded the crater left by the meteorite to create Lake Oblongata, and the camp was founded nearby not long after. Continuing through the camp, Raz meets a mysterious janitor who he recognizes from his dreams, but is unable to learn more about him before he disappears. When Raz discovers a secret tunnel system underneath the camp, he learns that the janitor is none other than Agent Ford Crawler, one of the founders and former leader of the Psychonauts. However, after a psychic battle left him mentally scarred, he was forced into retirement. Furthermore, whenever he leaves his underground sanctuary, which contains a large sample of the Cytanium, he drifts into alternate identities, explaining his role as the camp's janitor and chef, among other duties. Ford, an avid lover of bacon, gives Raz a piece, instructing him to use it to summon the agent if he ever needs his help. Moving forward, Kreller rewards Raz's progress by giving him other Psychonaut merit badges, granting him new psychic abilities. Later, Raz finds the geodesic psycho-isolation chambers, and inside he is able to find a secret entrance to Sasha's lab. Sasha shows Raz a large device called the Brain Tumbler, which will allow him to enter his own psyche through a shared landscape called the Collective Unconscious. Raz enters his own mind and sees a rundown circus caravan, which he reveals to Sasha as the location of his birth. Raz enters the caravan only to find himself inside a staticky egg, which he breaks out of. There he is met with a white rabbit, which he follows until he is stopped by a large, frightening figure. Sasha pulls Raz out of the tumbler and offers to train the boy how to fight the figure blocking his progress. After getting a marksmanship permit from Crawler, Sasha takes Raz into his own mind to teach him how to use the Psy Blast ability to shoot a psychic beam at his enemies. Sasha also teaches Raz about sensors, the mind's natural defense against intrusive thoughts and beings. 
Raz finds Sasha's memory vaults and learns that his mother died at a very young age. Growing up, Sasha wished to learn more about his mother, but his father was too torn up to speak about her. Sasha, a budding psychic, was able to use his abilities to enter his father's mind to learn about his mother, but unfortunately discovered some intimate memories inadvertently. The resulting awkwardness caused him to run away from home, where he eventually became a psychonaut. Raz fights through the censors, protecting Sasha and proving his ability to fight, earning the marksmanship merit badge from the agent. Raz re-enters the brain tumbler and enters his own mind once again, now able to shoot the monster and proceed. Inside, he finds his own memory vault, detailing his own history. Raz, a member of the acrobatic Aquato family, traveled with the circus until one day a mysterious cloaked figure handed him Coach Oleander's pamphlet for the psychic summer camp. His father, Augustus, discovered the pamphlet and ripped it up, disapproving of his son's desire to hone his psychic ability, given that his extended family were killed by a family of psychics named the Galokios, who proceeded to curse the Aquato family to die in water. One night, Raz snuck away from the family's caravan and made his way to the summer camp. Raz also finds another memory vault in the tumbler's projection of his mind. A strange creature hatches from an egg, rides a giant fish to an amusement park, then blasts the other fairgoers with a psychic blast from the teacup ride. Raz ignores this confusing vision and moves on. He soon comes upon a vision of a twisting tower, where at the top, a strange, mad dentist prepares to remove Dogen's brain. Raz tries to reach the top of the tower to save Dogen, but finds himself blocked by a ledge that's too high to jump to. Sasha pulls him back out and tells him that he'll need to speak with Mia Vodello to learn to levitate, and gives him an oarsman badge so he can use a boat to meet her at the docks. As he heads off, Raz finds Lily and reads her mind to learn that the girl is developing a bit of a crush on him, which embarrasses her and causes her to run off. Raz reaches Lake Oblongata to speak with Mia, but as he arrives, he sees a beckoning hand that appears out of the water, a manifestation of his fear of water stemming from the family's curse. Shortly after, Dogen emerges from the water, seemingly brainless. Raz peers through his ears and simply sees through the boy's hollow skull, confirming the vision he saw. Raz uses a boat and makes his way to Mia, who informs him that she got in contact with his father, who will be there the very next day to take him home. Raz then tries to warn Lily about the evil dentist, and she reveals that she had a dream about the very same figure. She then heads off to investigate, and the pair agree to meet that night at the boathouse to discuss their findings. Raz tells Mia that Sasha sent him to learn levitation from her, and she reluctantly agrees to let him into her mind to learn the ability. Inside Mia's mind, which is presented as a light dance party, Raz finds a very dark secret. In one of her memory vaults, Raz learns that Mia once worked in an orphanage, which one day caught fire while she was out. While she was unable to save the children, her psychic abilities allowed her to hear their screams of pain and pleas for help an event that she tries to lock away, but nonetheless still haunts her. After this tragedy, she joined the Psychonauts, where she worked alongside Sasha Nye, embarking on several adventures and even forming a bit of a budding romance. Raz reaches the end of Mia's training, which culminates in a levitation race against several other campers, in which he emerges victorious. This earns him his levitation merit badge, and he returns to Sasha's lab to learn more from his vision about the mad dentist. At the lab, Sasha learns that some other entity's thoughts are interfering with Raz's inside the brain tumbler, which is why he's been seeing strange things when he enters. Sasha tries to halt the experiment until he can learn more, but Raz convinces him to continue so he can learn more to help Dogen. Inside, Raz sees another vision of the dentist's experiment in which he gets Dogen to sneeze out his brain using some kind of powder. He then throws Dogen's brain down a garbage chute and leaves the room. Raz follows the brain down the chute, finding a blueprint at the bottom for a large tank. Just then, Dogen's brain is inserted into the blueprint of the tank and it comes alive, prompting a battle with Raz. After Raz defeats the blueprint tank, he finds himself inside the hallway he found in Oleander's mind, revealing that the tank was the blueprint he was hiding from the boy previously. Just then, Raz is ejected from the tumbler and Sasha states that he has to leave very abruptly due to official psychonaut business. After he rushes off, Raz noticed that he left his psycho portal behind, and he takes it before speaking to Crawler. The pair determined that Raz was actually inside of Coach Oleander's mind in the brain tumbler, and that the man must have gone rogue to steal the children's brains to power a fleet of tanks with psychic abilities to take over the world. Armed with this new knowledge, Raz decides to inform Lily and makes his way to the boathouse. 
Near the lake, Raz discovers that more campers have had their brains stolen, and he meets Lily on the beach to discuss. Lily confirms that she has also discovered Oleander's plot to steal the kids' brains to power his weapons. Lily states that Mia left on Psychonauts' business as well, and the pair agree to work together to stop Coach Oleander in the absence of the adult Psychonauts. However, before they can, Lily is abducted by a giant, fish-like monster that takes her below the surface of the lake. Due to his fear of entering the water, Raz uses the camp's bathysphere to submerge into the depths of the lake, where he finds an air pocket allowing him to exit the craft and fight the monster, known as the Hideous Hulking Lungfish. After Raz bests the creature in battle, Kruller reveals that Oleander must have mutated the fish and implanted something in its brain in order to receive its help in his evil plot. Raz then uses Sasha's psycho portal to enter the lungfish's mind in order to clear it of Oleander's influence. Inside, Raz learns that the lungfish lived peacefully in the lake until she was captured by the mad dentist, named Dr. Lobato, who mutated her and implanted her with a device to control her mind and force her to abduct the children from the camp so he could steal their brains. The lungfish's mind is represented as a city known as Lungfishopolis, which was peaceful until a figure called the Cochamera arrived and the inhabitants began to fall under his control. Raz, seen by the citizens of Lungfishopolis as a giant monster called Gogalor, works with an underground resistance movement to destroy a broadcast tower used by Cochamera to emit a mind control frequency. When Raz arrives at the tower, Cochamera follows and a battle ensues. Raz recognizes the villain as Coach Oleander and ultimately defeats him. Afterwards, Raz climbs the broadcast tower, but Coach Amara awakens and attacks, inadvertently destroying the tower himself. Oleander then speaks with Raz, who reveals that he doesn't need the lungfish to kidnap children, as Lily's mind is strong enough to power his entire army. He then disappears as Raz leaves the lungfish's mind. Outside, the lungfish thanks Raz for helping clear her mind, and as repayment, she takes him to where she was forced to bring the children, Thorny Tower's home for the disturbed. After delivering him to the island, the lungfish tells Raz her true name, Linda, before returning to the lake. At the entrance of the abandoned asylum, Raz meets a paranoid security guard named Boyd Cooper, who refuses to listen to the boy, instead rambling off various conspiracy theories about the milkman. Raz enters his mind with the portal, and inside he finds Boyd charting the conspiracy behind this milkman. As Raz explores, he learns that the milkman is believed to be dead, but secret government agents known as G-Men still search for him. Raz finds Boyd's memory vaults and learns that he was once the security guard of a department store. When he was fired, a disgruntled Boyd made Molotov cocktails out of milk bottles and gasoline and burned the store down, an act which led to him being committed at the asylum. There, Oleander found him and hypnotized him to act as the guard of the asylum. Raz eventually finds the Milkman, being held by a group called the Rainbow Squirts, whose den mother fights Raz to prevent the Milkman's discovery. After he defeats her in battle, the Milkman awakens and states, I am the Milkman, my milk is delicious, as he rises, throwing Molotov cocktail milk bottles at the G-Men and censors. Back outside Boyd's mind, Raz notices the guards snap into the milkman persona. As he grabs a nearby crate of milk bottles, he states that it's time for the final delivery to this address, and takes them inside the asylum's gates, allowing Raz to follow and enter the asylum's grounds. Inside the asylum, Raz begins to find hidden jars containing the removed brains of his fellow campers, and he takes them back to Cruller to be replaced in their heads. Eventually, Raz is able to find them all and save his new friends, as well as hinder Oleander's army somewhat. Raz searches the asylum and finds the entrance to Dr. Lobato's secret lab, an elevator that is unfortunately guarded by former patient Crispin Whitehead. Luckily, Crispin's eyesight is failing him, and he nearly mistakes Raz for the evil dentist himself, giving the boy the idea to disguise himself in order to trick the guard. Raz then determines he must help three nearby asylum inhabitants in order to obtain the elements that will make up his disguise. These inhabitants include Fred Bonaparte, a former orderly of the asylum whose experiences losing in a board game with Crispin led to him going mad and being inhabited by the personality of his ancestor, Napoleon. Raz helps Fred finally win a match inside his mind, allowing his true personality to awaken once again, after which he gives Raz his straitjacket he can use to dress like Dr. Lobato. Raz also helps fallen actress Gloria Van Guten, whose mother sent her to a cruel boarding school to learn to become a performer. After she began to see huge success, however, her mother committed suicide, causing Gloria to snap and lose her career. 
Raz enters her mind and defeats the angry critic inside her own personality, allowing her to move on in peace. She then gives Raz one of her awards, which he can use to mimic Lobato's claw-like prosthetic hand. Finally, Raz meets another patient, wrestler Edgar Teagley, whose high school sweetheart left him for the captain of the cheerleading squad, leaving him heartbroken and without his fighting spirit. Raz enters his mind and helps Edgar see the true nature of his failed relationship, allowing him to let go of the trauma. In the asylum, Edgar gives Raz a painting of Lobato, allowing him to place it over his own face to trick Crispin. With the full disguise in place, Raz is able to get past Crispin and enter the elevator to the top of the tower. There, he spots a hunchback figure who runs from him before she finally warns him to stop climbing the tower before disappearing. Raz ignores the warning and continues up the tower, finding the figure, Shigor, assisting Dr. Lobato under duress, threatening her pet turtle, Mr. Pokelope, if she doesn't. As she walks off, Raz notices Sasha and Mia's brains inside of jars in Lobato's lab. Shortly after, Raz finds Shigor with the unbrained bodies of Sasha and Mia, as well as a still-sentient Lily, whose cold prevented Lobato from using the powder to make her sneeze out her brain. After Raz reads her mind to hear her again wanting to kiss him, an angered Lily sends him off to rebrain Sasha and Mia so they can help unlock Lily's restraints. Raz retrieves Mr. Pokelope and brings him back to Shigor. Mr. Pokelope reveals himself to be not only sentient, but also very clever, and he devises a plan to distract Lobato so they can rebrain the adult Psychonauts. Shigor brings Lobato Mr. Pokelope's brain, and Raz telekinetically places it into his prototype tank, allowing Pokelope to blast Lobato off the tower. After rebraining Mr. Pokelope, Raz follows suit by rebraining Sasha and Mia. Impressed by Shigor's abilities, Sasha brings her on as his own personal assistant. The pair then free Lily, just as Coach Oleander arrives. Raz scolds him for all the evil he's done, including kidnapping his girlfriend, but Mia telekinetically sends the kids away, while she and Sasha prepare to mentally battle Oleander. Elsewhere in the asylum, the former patients that Raz helped leave, just as a gas line begins to leak into the building. Boyd then throws a Molotov cocktail milk bottle at the asylum, lighting it aflame. Just then, the embodiments of the Milkman, the Den Mother, the G-Men, and the Rainbow Squirts leave his mind as he happily exclaims, the Milkman has completed his route, before leaving with the others. Atop the now burning tower, Oleander battles with Sasha and Mia just as Ford Cruller arrives to tip the scales. Cruller uses the sneezing power on Oleander, and as he sneezes, the tower explodes, just as Raz and Lily share their first kiss outside. After the tower falls, the adult Psychonauts float safely to the ground to meet with Raz and Lily. The coach then emerges from the rubble, but having sneezed out his brain, his body is merely a husk. Shortly after, the prototype tank emerges as well, powered by Oleander's brain. Raz fights the tank and destroys it, opening it only to be met with a cloud of the sneezing powder, which causes him to sneeze out his own brain. Raz is able to move his brain into the tank, where it combines with Coach Oleander's, throwing him into a mindscape of his own memories mixed with the coach's. Inside their combined minds, Raz finds himself in a circus composed of various meats. Here he learns the true nature of Coach Oleander's background. As a boy, Morceau Oleander loved bunny rabbits, but his father, a butcher, took one he was particularly fond of and slaughtered it for its meat, traumatizing the young boy. As he got older, he tried to join the military but was rejected from every branch he applied for due to his short stature, driving his resentment and desire to build his own militia to punish the world. As it turns out, the memory vault in his training course was fabricated to trick the children into believing Coach Oleander was a decorated war hero when he was truly a bitter reject. Raz travels through the meat circus with a vision of Oleander as a child, helping him chase and retrieve various bunnies resembling the one he lost as a child. After going on his favorite ride, however, little Oleander is ambushed by a large, monstrous figure of his father, which begins to chase Raz. Raz is able to outsmart the giant butcher, but he simply smacks the boy out of the circus tent with one of his cleavers. When Raz lands, he finds that Oleander's father isn't the only one he has to worry about, as he soon sees a twisted vision of his own father, who scolds him for associating with psychics before forcing him through an acrobatic challenge while a pool of water rises below him. Raz successfully makes his way through the challenge, but the vision of his father continues to scold him, denouncing him as his son before leaving. Raz follows and finds the two fathers now speaking to each other. 
He is then forced to again fight the Butcher while avoiding flaming pins thrown by the vision of his own father. After defeating the Butcher for a second time, the giant falls into a nearby meat grinder. Suddenly, Raz is surprised to see his actual father. Augustus is surprised to see his son's mental image of him and reveals that he doesn't hate psychics as he is one himself, which allowed him to find and enter his son's mind. He explains that his desire to keep Raz away from the Psychonauts was simply to keep him safe, as their family has formed a lot of enemies over the years. Augustus throws the twisted vision of himself into the meat grinder, but is soon met with an unexpected result. A freakish combination of both fathers emerges from the grinder and attacks Raz. Augustus then provides his power to his son, allowing him to temporarily grow to the same size as the two-headed monster to put up a fight. Raz is able to destroy the monstrous vision and escape the meat circus with his father. They see one final vision of little Oleander, now content with his childhood as his mind begins to separate from Raz's. Afterwards, Augustus and Raz return to the real world together as the father reveals he had poked around Raz's memory and asks his son about his new girlfriend. Sometime later, Coach Oleander briefs the children of the camp once again, revealing that after Raz cleared out his own mental demons, he was allowed back into the Psychonauts after being cleared as sane. He apologizes for stealing their brains and gives all of the credit to Raz. Cruller then awards Raz with a uniform, offering him a position in the Psychonauts, an offer the boy gladly accepts. Afterwards, Raz speaks with Lily and he prepares to say goodbye until the next summer. After the pair share a goodbye kiss, Sasha, Mia, and Cruller arrive with bad news. Truman Zanato, the grand head of the Psychonauts, as well as Lily's father, has been kidnapped. Sasha asks Raz to join them on the hunt to find Truman, and after Augustus gives his blessing, the boy heads off with Sasha, Mia, Oleander, and Lily to take the jet to find the Psychonauts leader and get to the bottom of his kidnapping. Across the lake, Linda emerges to find Shigor and Mr. Pokelope. Linda recognizes the turtle, who she refers to as Sam, and he flatters her a bit, indicating some kind of romantic history between the two. Aboard the Psychonauts jet, Raz finds a personal item of Truman Zanato's, a music box that originally belonged to his mother. Raz, with the combined powers of the other Psychonauts, is able to use his psychic ability, clairvoyance, to connect with Truman and see the location where he is being held. Raz is able to jump into the consciousness of the various henchmen in the facility and learns that they have Truman's head in a psycho-isolation machine in order to suppress his abilities. Raz continues to investigate to learn that Truman is actually being held in an unused underwater psychonaut research facility. Furthermore, he learns that the facility is built atop a large deposit of Silerium, the counterpart mineral to Citanium, which hinders psychic ability instead of enhancing it. Now with enough information to find Truman, Raz is pulled out of Truman's mind, but the man leaves him with a warning to not follow him there. Back in the jet, Sasha informs Raz that Truman's location rests within the Rhombus of Ruin, a region of the ocean notorious for planes and ships that have mysteriously gone missing within its four equilateral sides. While Raz tries to relay Truman's warning, Sasha reveals that they had actually been en route to the location for hours and are arriving momentarily. Just then, the jet's navigation systems are compromised, and they begin to rapidly descend. Just before they crash, Sasha tries to confess something to Mia, but he is unable to before the aircraft hits the water, and they all pass out. When Raz awakens, he finds himself strapped to a chair in the same location Truman is being held. While most of his psychic abilities are blocked due to the Silerium deposit, he is able to use his clairvoyance to inhabit the minds of the other creatures around him, eventually opening a nearby window and entering the mind of a fish outside the facility. He hops from the mines of fish to fish and eventually finds Mia in a crashed school bus. The Silerium's influence puts her in a trance where she sees the researchers in the bus as endangered children, which she is compelled to rescue due to her tragic past. Luckily, Raz is able to use her love of music to snap her out of it by turning on the radio to a dance station. After Mia awakens, she channels her psychic ability to him so he can use telekinesis once again. Raz then returns to hopping through the consciousness of the nearby aquatic life to continue looking for the others. In a nearby submerged bomber, Raz finds Lily, similarly compromised by the Silerium's influence. He's able to use her father's music box to snap her out of it, and Raz helps her and her new friend, Harold the Rat, escape the bomber by igniting a pile of bombs, blasting a hole in the side of the craft. Raz continues to follow Lily, helping her move through a train by clearing her path and distracting various guards until she reaches a dead end. 
Using Harold, Raz learns that the guards and researchers are mutated fish. He is then able to hop through more of their consciousness to locate Sasha, confused by the Solarium to see those around him as alien life forms. Raz is able to fashion a turntable and play music for Sasha, which snaps him out of his own trance. Raz then heads off to look for the final missing psychonaut, Coach Oleander. He hops through more fish to find a sunken cruise ship, where he finds a very confused Oleander singing as the member of a band. Raz tries to get him to stop, eventually being forced to flood the dance floor. Unfortunately, Oleander's stumpy legs prevent him from being able to swim, but Raz is able to find a mermaid's tail, which he is able to fashion to the coach to allow him to traverse the water. When Oleander learns of the mutant fish creatures, he's reminded of someone he recently worked with who had the ability to manipulate the minds of fish. This leads Raz to realize the chair he is strapped to is a dentist chair, further alarming the coach. Suddenly, Raz awakens back in the chair, and when he turns, he's startled to discover that his captor is none other than Dr. Lobato himself. Lobato reveals that he has been moonlighting by working for another client, one who he refuses to reveal to Raz. When the doctor turns around, Coach Oleander swims below and hands his psycho portal to Raz, who is able to use it to enter Lobato's mind. There, Raz finds himself on a boat with a missing compass. Suddenly, a massive version of Dr. Lobato emerges from the waters, revealing it to be within a bathtub. Raz is able to avoid the giant doctor's attacks, destroying his protective shower cap and side-blasting his brain, knocking loose a memory vault. Raz opens the vault and takes a trip through the doctor's memories. When he was born, Lobato's parents had high hopes and promise for the boy, but as he started to get older, he showed his psychic abilities by bending the family's spoons with his mind. These abilities scared the young boy's parents, who sent him to the hospital his father worked at to undergo an ice pick lobotomy, which seemingly cured him of his psychic abilities, but left him severely altered, which led to his eventual commitment to the asylum. Raz finds the missing compass and returns it to the boat, allowing it to begin its voyage to new waters as Raz exits the dentist's mind with a new sense of understanding. Raz speaks with Dr. Lobato, who now realizes the bad things he's done in his past. He makes a call for the guards to release all of the prisoners to bring them together, and states that the experiments in the facility are now over. Because he plans to blow the entire facility up, with the prisoners inside. Lobato then triggers an explosion, and releases Truman and the Psychonauts into the facility with Raz before he runs off. Water begins to enter the chamber, and Raz sees the beckoning hands of his fear of the water curse. He's able to fight through his fear and use his clairvoyance to lead Harold the Rat to the Psychonauts' jet, then initiate the aircraft's launch sequence. The Psychonauts then rush to the jet, carrying Truman along with them. As Raz watches the jet fly off from the mind he's in, the facility self-destructs around him. Luckily, Raz awakens inside the jet, finally back in his own body, where he discovers that he was indeed carried out with Truman. Unfortunately, as Mia walks away from him, a claw-like prosthetic arm pops out of an overhead luggage compartment. Raz doesn't have time to focus on this, however, as Sasha announces they are exiting the rhombus and heading towards the Psychonauts' headquarters, the Mother Lobe. Lily then whispers to her father, who turns to Raz, startled that his daughter has a boyfriend. And with that, we find ourselves at the very beginning of Psychonauts 2 in which our team of heroes arrive at Psychonauts headquarters, where they'll continue to work to discover the true nature behind the plot to kidnap their leader, as well as what happened to the organization in his absence. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please leave a like, comment on what you'd like to see next, and of course subscribe for more great gaming story content. Also make sure you check out Psychonauts 2 when it comes out August 25th on all of your favorite gaming platforms, including Xbox Game Pass on day one. A huge thanks to Xbox and Double Fine for sponsoring this video. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter at Suggestive Games as well as Suggestive Gaming on Facebook for updates on what I'm working on. See you guys next time!